Hey guys, welcome back to Underwater Dreams. Today we're gonna be talking about the cyanobacteria. Okay, those uh, red slime algae, uh, kind of things that you normally found on this uh, sandbed. Okay, so let's go and see what we can do about it. Now to the causes that you have a cyanobacteria inside the drift tank. Okay? The main causes are because you have uh, existing uh, nutrients inside your reef tank. Okay? Nutrients are ever present inside your reef tank unless you have a ULNS tank that is a ultra low nutrition system. Okay? In this case you want to have a lowest possible nutrient, nutrients inside your reef tank. Okay? So first cause is the nutrients, PO4 and NO3, okay? So elevated levels are definitely gonna contribute to your uh, cyanobacteria bloom, okay? Uh, normally you see it's on the bottom part, that is, which is the sand, okay? They'll be brownish or reddish in color and they'll be, uh, most probably, uh, once you siphon out, they come back every single day, okay? The second cause for the cyanobacteria uh, bloom in your reef tank that's always present in your, inside your reef tank is because your light spectrum okay in case you are using a t5 bulbs for your reef aquariums okay the t5 bulbs over time degrade and also need to be changed once or twice a year okay in this case those uh, spectrum inside the t5 bulbs are going to be uh, reducing and once you buy your new bulbs it's going to be reading maybe 10k or 14k uh, color temperature by the time and end of the lifetime is going to be reading maybe less than that so these color spectrums that's contribute to the algae growth is going to be contributing to the bloomage of your uh, cyanobacteria as well because they do photosynthesize another good cause for the cyanobacteria bloom in your reef tank that's uh, gonna be a dead spot. Dead spot is the where uh, there is uh, less water circulation inside your reef tank. Dead spots can happen where you have uh, less uh, uh, gyre wave makers or even you can have a uh, wave makers itself. Okay. So but uh, then uh, the water is pushing through uh, inside your uh, reef tank but it doesn't uh, approach that site where you need to be uh, circulated. So dead spots is known as dead spot where no circulations no water movement okay so that place becomes a, a good place for them to uh, to grow on and also bloom in, in, in your reef tank another cause can be a lack of uh, biomedia inside your reef tank okay are there in your reef tank or some you might be have a uh, less uh, bio rocks that's contribute to uh, to these bacteria to take over your sand bed okay sand bed has a lot of porous area a lot of areas for them to grow on so they choose this place to to just uh stay on okay that's why you usually see uh, those bacteria are going to be uh, dominating all these bottom parts okay in some cases they're going to be overtaking your uh, rock work as well because you are lacking on uh, biofiltration okay biofiltration by your rocks okay so these rocks are going to be porous inside and they're going to be providing a home for them to live on and to multiply okay so now we're going to talk about uh, why some methods uh, doesn't work okay uh, most people uh, try to use chemicals okay chemicals in a leaf aquarium hobby that's a lot and uh, using them is just going to be a temporary effect okay they're just going to come back okay because you are feeding your fish with a uh, nutrients rich uh, pellets and also in a 
frozen food whatsoever it's going to degrade and it's going to create uh, nutrients po4 and no3 that's the key things that's a cause is going to be your cyanobacteria bloom okay and using these chemicals definitely you see the word when you hear the word chemical so these things just going to give you a side effect a by side effect where you use one thing and you get another thing undesirable x inside your tank something just gonna go off and then you're gonna have a bounce back that's this thing's gonna come back most reefers do is that they do follow this uh, black house okay uh, covering your reef tank uh, fully black plastics or whatever things that's gonna cover and don't light up your reef tank for three to seven days that's basically what they do black out okay 7 black out for seven days or three days and then uh, they open up and they light it up and then it comes back because the nutrients are always there you don't manage your nutrients you can't get rid of them you can't manage them so this is why this is the problem with them is that using these chemicals using these uh, black cows it's not going to contribute or help you either to uh, eradicate them because they're just going to come back so in place of uh, get rid of them instead of get rid of them i'm gonna just going to use uh, a word a better word that is uh, managing them okay cyanobacteria can be get rid of okay you know it's gonna come back and uh, most people who have done the thing that don't work they always realize that they've done it it's just a waste of, waste of time so now we're just gonna talk about how to manage first thing is that provide a good flow inside a reef tank that's gonna blast out all those places with the water movements okay in this place no dead spores it's gonna have a water circulation it's gonna provide oxygen and it's gonna have a good place that is gonna have less cyanobacteria on the same bed and another thing is that you give a routine water change in weekly water change when you do a water change you do use a, a siphonage uh, try to use siphon and uh, siphon out all these uh, bacteria of your rock works or even your sand bed and then you realize they're coming back so this way you know because it's always present inside there i do uh, my way is that i use a pvc piping long pvc piping i this the sand bed from the top i don't put my hand inside this way i also uh, prevent the uh, cross contamination okay so this way then i flush it out through my giant palms through my filter sock then i remove it that's one of the way I manage my uh, cyanobacteria and you can see I also have a lot of cyanobacteria here and another week I'm gonna want to change it's gonna go off so if you have a better way or better method that can be uh, eradicating maybe uh, please let me know inside the comment section okay uh, let me see maybe I can try as well and uh, if you guys have a uh, better comments please comment go ahead inside your inside the comment section so guys i'll be linking out all this uh water change method below this episode so you guys can go and click it on and watch it by yourself how i do my water change okay and uh, lastly i would like to say that uh, these uh, bacteria are ever present so uh, trying to eradicate them using chemicals it's just going to be a waste of time blackouts it's just going to be a waste of time and uh, I'm trying to manage in a good filtration system that's going to be contribute a lot okay uh, they are not as bad as, it, as you can see but managing your nutrition system uh, nutrient ex uh, export method a uh, best method I can say is that that's the best method okay unless you do not uh, do that uh, water change or you're trying to cope up with your uh, less water change system whatever is that you always gonna have a bloom inside your reef tank so that's it guys for this week's episode we talked about cyanobacteria okay for the next episode i will let you guys know at the end of the end of this episode and uh, please uh, leave a like as well please don't forget to subscribe your subscription gonna make me do a lot more videos that's gonna share my experience with you guys so that's it guys for this week's video Please be safe wherever you guys are and happy reefing.